Quickly, a couple of points, because when we talk about the lever assembly, this is such an important part of hitting, and it must be uh, understood 100% as to what you're trying to accomplish. Typically, all hitters, when they take a stride, panic and spasm. They cast or throw the bat away from them, and when they do that, they double the travel, uh, double the travel time and half the travel speed. From the standpoint of creating problems, that's going to create problems. It's going to make you longer and stronger. You're going to double it out here, double the distance, half the speed. It is so very critical that the hitter control the energy flow. We get club head throw away or do we start the hands relaxed to the ball. We will work incessantly day after day with every hitter we touch just to accomplish that. Again, fear of failure and fear of pain throw tension into our hands. We're so afraid we're going to fail, so afraid we're going to get hit. It's tough to get tension out of the hands. It takes great training. It also takes strength. It also takes concentration. A lot of those things we can't control. One thing we can control is we can control a energy that we have collected and brought through the body and it's going to flow and use the term float load and use the term flow to the ball. It's important that we get to a point to where we also understand another term, maybe real critical, is lag. If we coming one, two, three, if we're striding back knee trigger and the hands are float loading and the lever assembly is properly developed, you'll notice the barrel of the bat will lag back until the last possible moment. Every slow motion we see of tennis players, golfers, baseball players, all great players have sequential unlocking. They have a power base, they have a back knee trigger, they have a lever, a lever assembly, and then you'll see lag. The club head will trail those hands. Those hands will come in here and that bat will always be back. In fact, when you see good movies of any hitter, golfer, tennis player, you're going to see that club head bend because it has such torque in it created by lag. That is all destroyed if you throw the hands out away from the body, if you panic early, if you separate, if you have all the problems that tension causes. It will be extremely difficult to learn to relax the hands. It will be extremely difficult to get to a power base, stay vertically stacked, back knee trigger brings me into a vertical flow, and get that done sustaining relaxation so that we can float load to the area. Boy, if I can just get you to this particular point, we've got a great chance to be a great hitter. All right, we have now six touch systems, and all of those are for the purpose of putting the hitter in what we call a basic arc, or shortening the stroke down and giving him about 50% or 60% of his actual stroke. The purpose of the touch system is to eliminate tension in the hands, to put the hitter's hands or bat in touch with his body so that he knows where it is while he takes the stride to a power base while he takes a back knee trigger mechanism, makes those work, we're putting him down in almost a midpoint release, placing him in a position where he knows what the barrel's doing. Now, you must remember that the touch system puts him in a position where he has only 50 or 60 percent of the stroke. Touch number one is at the midpoint of the body, right down the center of the body. We take the prehensile grip in the top hand, get a piece of the shirt, then as we take a striding action, and as the back knee triggers, we know that we have not shown tension unless we have torn our shirt off or turned the hands loose. So the purpose of the grip and touch system number one is to see if we can stride back knee trigger and get to gear number three. We're already at midpoint. It's much the same thing as presetting the heel for gear number two. We preset the hands in the midpoint release area, reduced it down to a basic arc. That's touch number one. Now each of the other touch systems are for the same purpose. Touch number one primarily is dealing with short arm, stocky, built type guys, turtle bodies. Touch number two is the move up. We get a little more length in the stroke as we move up. We take him just to help him here. If he's restricted this area, we move him up. We'll get his hands on his ear, somewhere up on the neck. So that touch number two gives him a higher feeling. It lets his elbows drop more naturally. He doesn't feel so encumbered with the bat. And again, as he takes a striding action and his back knee triggers, we're maintaining contact with that area. It'll feel very uncomfortable to the hitters when they first start working with it because they've never swung the bat without having tension or without having casting or club head throw away. It eliminates most of the stroke, gives it a basic arc, just a basic piece of the stroke. Touch number three comes down, we just lay it on the shoulder. Again, we need a touching axis. We need somewhere where the bat's touching us so that as we stride and trigger the back knee, we realize that we're not getting tension in our hands we're not spasming the club, getting club head throw away. We take a striding action and a back knee trigger, and we keep it right there, 
as we trigger the back knee, then gear number three with a good lever assembly is able to be released. Now we've moved through one and two, and they are basically for stocky kids, short arm pipe people. The three position is kind of the midpoint, and then we come back for longer arm hitters. Number four is just below the point of the shoulder, held firmly with power point two, with those lead three fingers right here, holding about against the back shoulder. This is very natural for the longer arm hitter. He takes a striding action, back knee trigger, and the bat will be in that natural lag position as he comes to the delivery. It is not a position of power, and obviously hitters are going to feel inherent weakness, but it is a basic arc, and it will teach you sequence. And it will teach you something about what the body's doing and how you're delivering the bat. Touch number five, we just bring it on back into much like a Rod Carew work for years in a lag set. This is about a relaxed position as we can get the hands into. It's called a lag set. And as he moves to the ball, we just want to find out what the bat's doing. Uh, stride, back knee trigger before we get a lot of tension in the bat. If he can keep it loosey-goosey and float loaded, he's going to have a beautifully loose bat that will travel through the striking zone. Touch number six. We're placing the back elbow in here against the chest. We're placing that back elbow in the power alley. We're giving that power alley a chance to work. We're touching along the lines of the tricep as he takes a striding action. We're trying to feel, is that back elbow in that alley? So each of the six touches, first of all, teach you how to get your hands tension free. But more importantly, each touch takes you down to a basic arc and teaches you how to sequence the stroke. Step, back knee trigger, then come to a hitting area, proper lever assembly, proper relaxation, tension free. Wow, we're close right now if we can reach this point with a touch system and becoming a very good hitter. Now, the device that we have on right here, we've gotten out of a, uh, an idea from Goff. It basically straps the elbows down. As we raise your arms, Rock, notice that it is merely sewn at this particular point. What it does is it makes quick zone number two, the distance between my elbows, a predetermined factor. So it forces me into a pretty good lever assembly from this standpoint. That's one drill, and you can make those on your own. Probably you can find them four or five bucks or find you a good piece of elastic and make those to fit each individual hitter. The second device he has is what we call a palm pat. We're taking the top hand off almost and making it push more than do anything else. We want to learn how to swing the bat here with a lead arm. This will take you away from tension. You can sit up here and swing this bat almost as hard as you can and you can't squeeze this hard enough with a top hand to cause casting or throw away. The palm, top hand palm bat is to try to eliminate tension in the top hand. That's where most tension comes from. You can eliminate tension here, then you can start getting float loading and proper assembly. And we're going, to re, we're going to pull this down, take this off, and come to what we call a palm uh, or a armpit pad device. And again, remember we talked about the fourth power collector and the fourth power point being really the master, the real key. The bicep being able to make contact here with this gives us an inward pressure. And we can get into a striding action, a back knee trigger, and we can float load, but if we can't keep this baby in the proper position, then we got problems. So we can use the pad, and we can use it on either side. In fact, it can be used on the back side, back in here to help us feel the position of the back elbow getting into the power alley. Those three devices are all to deal with and work with the lever assembly. They will put it in a proper position. They will help you with your quick zone. They will give you a feeling of what it's supposed to be like. Now you can add these to the touch system. Take the six touches that Coach Boer demonstrated and take the three or four devices that we've thrown in here with Coach Ward. You can combine anything you're doing as a swinging apparatus with the touch system. You can take live BP with these types of operations as well. And you'll begin to feel what lever assembly is supposed to do. You'll begin to feel what a relaxed stroke feels like. Dealing with lead arm, quick toss. Again, the ball is being delivered quickly into the zone, not lollipopped in there. It's very important that we deal with this. Now, with this as well, we can take this pad, stick it into this position with Coach Whistler. We can use the strappings. We can use the palm pad bat. We can change positions and add devices. But in this particular area, you can go back to quick toss. And again, Coach Brewer is giving this with some velocity. This is not a lollipop. This is quick toss, not soft toss. We want the ball thrown into the zone with some reaction time. The armpit pad 